Hi, James. Hello. Sarah from The Upcoming. Hello. Such a pleasure to meet you. So, King of Thieves. Um, I mean, there's been, it's only happened three years ago, this true story. There's already been multiple uh, films yeah, about it. more to come, I would assume. So what is it about this story that's so appealing? Well, I think you know, the ingredients are so obviously irresistible. It's, it's a heist film, it's an old, but it's a heist that actually, the true story is like any heist film. It has exactly what you look for in a heist film. Beginning, a middle and an end, which is planning, execution, fallout. But because of the age of the characters involved and the environments they came from, and the surprise of that, and, and the fact they have to, they're suffering from various physical ailments they have to overcome as they're trying to do this young man's physical demanding heist. That all felt very interesting. And the details of that are very interesting too. So um, there's a lot to work on dramatically that Joe Pennell, the writer, could kind of get to work on. I mean, what a bunch of heavyweights you managed to put together yeah, no, for, the, for this film. Know, <laughs> incredible um, and quite daunting going into it as a director who's not that experienced with actors, to have these actors with their experience and the kind of films that I grew up with you know, and the kind of, you know, the, um, and to have them all together in certain scenes and having to deal with that was quite challenging. But they were very kind to me. And were, there, were there any particular highlights on set or any particular challenging moments? One, I have to assemble uh, all, the, all the older actors in a change room and get them all to take their clothes off and put on suits. So the first scene we do is Michael Caine in his underpants, Tom in his underpants, uh, and I choose the underpants beforehand, and they get to wear them, I get to shoot this, but I have to ask them all to take their clothes off, which is really quite a difficult thing to do on day one as your first shot. But that all went very well, so from then on it went, went that was a good start, basically. It's also a film that feels undeniably British, just the wit and the humour and, the, you know, obviously yeah, the all these actors. Of it as well, and the kind of small-mindedness of it all. Yeah, there's, it's very British, or very, and it's very London too. You know, Hatton Gardens is a very, very particular part of London, and these characters come from London. Uh, they have a kind of mythology and a history in London. So it's a very British film, and then I guess the humour of the story, you know, tracks with our national sense of humour too. Uh, you know, it's quite cruel, basically, and sadistic. And it also feels like there's some other themes that come out there, obviously. The, uh, Brian Reader has lost his wife at the beginning, dealing with the, the ailments. They didn't want this one last job. reality of old age. And the, you know that your window is closing fast as you get older. There's not so much you've got left to look forward to. So I, the part of it I really do admire is this, 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 this refuting your age and refusing to kind of bow to your ailments and your geriatric sort of troubles. Um, nothing else you can really commend in a sort of moral way, but that I can get behind. Can you quickly tell us about any other projects you've got in the pipeline? I, I, not really. I'm doing a, a documentary project at the moment, which I can't talk about. Um, so I'm, I'm a documentary filmmaker as well as a feature film, as you probably know. Uh, so I'm doing a documentary now, as we speak. <laughs> I was invited to kind of take a look at this story, and I wasn't sure at first I wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. I was the right person to do it. But when we started to think about the kind of actors that you might be able to bring to this story, yeah. I began to get much more interested in the story. Plus, it's a true story, and I might back these documentary films. So I felt quite comfortable with the idea of telling a true story, even if even the story itself ends up often being much more comedic than I was expecting going into it. But given the nature of the age of the act of the characters involved, and indeed their mean-spirited backstabbing on the back of what the loot, that all felt very interesting to me as because it was all true. Well, it's a story. It, you know, it's like one of those stories from the Bible. You can tell it over and over again. Yeah, that's true. Because it's. Well, I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Oh, okay. That would be up to you to decide. No, I, I don't know. I seen it. Well, I, well I, 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 I wouldn't be helpful me to see another film based on the same story. That would be unhelpful. Yeah. I, didn't, I wouldn't say better. I mean, I, I got the actors I wanted, yeah. um, and I, I, I enjoyed and loved every minute of working with them. It was an amazing cast. Are you kidding me? Look at them all. <laughs> no, oh, it's amazing. You know, so and you know, it's sort of a cast that you grew up with, yeah. actors that you, you'd, you'd seen in films that you were really important to you growing up. And to have them all, each one of them has been in films that I truly love and have worshipped, you know, as a, as a uh, hunter as well as a filmmaker. And then to work with them all as an ensemble was just amazing. This man in particular.